What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Dell XPS 8940 gaming desktop. Now they do offer these in a few different variants, but this one here has 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. We also have an RTX 3060 and a new 11th gen i7 CPU. So yeah, taking a look at the specs on paper, this thing should perform really well. I'm a huge fan of the industrial design here, but I do love these kind of pre-built cases. I've always been a big fan of the older Dell Optiplex cases. They just look good to me, and they're not too flashy. This one definitely comes across as a little higher end, but it does line up with their case designs from the past 10 years. There's a lot of cardboard dust on this one here. I just pulled it out of the box, but around back here, we do have full access to all of our I.O. We also have access to the display ports and HDMI on that RTX 3060. The power supply is located at the bottom here, and on the back, there's really no frills. I mean, we have our I.O., we have our HDMI, our display port, and that's really all we need for a PC like this. I'll go ahead and pull the side panel off here, and to my surprise, this is actually using quad-channel RAM. Well, I'm not exactly sure if it's running in quad-channel, but since we have 32 gigabytes of RAM, we have four 8 gigabyte sticks in this unit. And when it comes down to it, a lot of these pre-built PCs with either 8 or 16 gigabytes of RAM only use a single stick, I'm actually glad to see all of these slots filled up. It would have been really nice to have a larger cooler given that we have that 8 core 16 thread i7 CPU. It's an 11th gen and we'll get into the specs in a second. But along with that CPU, we also have the RTX 3060. And this is not an OEM variant. This is actually an EVGA RTX 3060 XC. It's kind of surprising to see in the EVGA in here. Most of the time when HP, Lenovo, and Dell do these pre-builds, they use an OEM variant of the card. But this one here is rocking an EVGA. So I'm pretty happy with the RAM configuration and the GPU they chose to use in this. Like I mentioned, I am a little disappointed by the smaller CPU cooler. And one thing that really gets me with these Dells, and I understand why they do it, they definitely want to make money down the road, this has a proprietary power supply, and Dell has been doing this for years along with HP and Lenovo. But before we get into the full specs and start testing this thing out, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by Micro Center. They were kind enough to send this XPS over for review. If you head over to their website right now, I'll leave a link in the description. They have a new section called the Platinum Collection. This is where they have all of their high quality name brand gaming laptops and desktops. There's a lot of great stuff to choose from in here. I've done a couple reviews on laptops from them, and I really wanted to get my hands on this XPS, so they were kind enough to send it over. If you're interested in checking out what they have to offer in the Platinum Collection, I will leave a link in the description. When it comes to the specs of this Dell XPS 8940, we have the Intel i7-11700 CPU, 8 cores, 16 threads, base clock of 2.5 GHz with a max turbo up to 4.9. This specific configuration came with 32GB of DDR4 running at 2933MHz. We also have the EVGA RTX 3060 with 12GB of VRAM. This came with a pre-installed 1TB NVMe SSD along with a mechanical 1TB hard drive. Built-in Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.1, and it's running Windows 10 Pro right out of the box. So far, everything's been working really well. I've fully updated all the drivers and the operating system. Uh, one thing that I am noticing are some higher temps on the CPU. We haven't thermal throttled yet, but just through all of the updating and everything, I have seen it get a bit higher than I'd like. Before we move over to my game capture and take a closer look at everything, I figured we'd go ahead and test one game. Here's Dirt 5 with an ultra high mix. We're getting an average of around 75 FPS. It's looking really good here. GPU temps are great, but if we take a look at that CPU temp, just from playing this game right here with those high normal settings, 1080p, we've hit 90 degrees Celsius on that CPU. And we're fluctuating between 22 and 30% utilization on that CPU. We really haven't even hit this thing up at 100% yet. Okay, so here we are up and running. As you can see, we have that i7-11700, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 2933, and the NVIDIA RTX 3060. I can tell you right now that this CPU cooler really isn't going to cut it with the 11700. I just have Core Temp, an older application, up and running. I haven't done anything strenuous except for boot it up, launch CPU-Z, GPU-Z, and the Task Manager. We had Core 4 go up to 82 degrees Celsius already. We're idling right now, and it's around 44, 45. Not too bad, but, you know, I've seen a lot lower. Side panel's on the unit right now. If I pulled the side panel off, these temps would definitely drop down, but that's not how we're going to run this thing. And since this is a pre-built, there will be some bloat. We do have the Dell Manager. 
Uh, this is going to allow us to connect to Dell servers, scan our PC. Uh, really, for this setup here, it's kind of junk. I haven't found any kind of performance settings inside of the My Dell application. Another one that's on basically everything is McAfee. This is something I always uninstall. If we go over here, we do have a few more Dell applications. But yeah, I mean, when it comes down to it, you get a pre-built by a company like Dell, Lenovo, or HP, you're going to have a little bit of bloat on it. Most of this stuff can be uninstalled safely. I've already gone through and run some benchmarks. Let's take a look at those first. When it comes to Geekbench 5 for single core, 1629, this is looking great. Multi, 8785. Not bad at all, but it is a bit lower than the newer Zen 3 Ryzen's with 8 cores and 16 threads. Cinebench R23, total multi-core score, 10,358. I did a little bit of research online and we should be getting a much higher score here in Cinebench R23. I really think it's coming down to that CPU cooler. We are hitting thermal throttle in Cinebench R23. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks, 3 d Mark Firestrike 18,572. And finally, Time Spy with an 8,783. So when it comes to these GPU benchmarks, given that we have that RTX 3060, I think they're looking pretty good. And we should be able to get some really good gameplay out of the way. So let's go ahead and see how this thing performs. First up, Doom Eternal, 1080p, Nightmare Settings. We got an average of 178 FPS. With that RTX 3060, I figured we'd get a really good frame rate with this game, especially at 1080. Call of Duty Warzone, 1080p, high settings, we got an average of 108 FPS, fully playable here, it's looking really good, and I did try this at 1440p, I got an average of 71, so yeah, this is definitely playable at 1440, high settings. Here's Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p, high settings, no ray tracing. We got an average of 68 FPS, and this is just one of those games that's really hard to run. Since we have an RTX card, I figured I'd go ahead and see what it did with ray tracing on. So I just went over to the ray tracing medium preset, and we got an average of 54 out of it. Personally, with the 3060, I'd be happy with just playing this at high settings, 1080p, no ray tracing. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, maxed out, 1080p, it's going to run at 60 all day. I also tested Injustice 2, we can go to Ultra with that, no problem at all. So fighting games will work with this setup just fine. Moving over to GTA 5, 1080p, very high settings, we got an average of 112 FPS. And I know it's an older game, it's still one of my favorites to play in single player mode. We're getting amazing performance with this setup. So with the PC gaming out of the way, now it's time to move over to my favorite part of these videos. We're going to test out some emulation. We'll go with some Wii U, some PS3, and even some Xbox 360 to see how this thing can handle it. First on the list, we have Wii U using Simu, Breath of the Wild, 1080p, Vulcan backend. It runs at 60 very, very well. I have noticed a few dips here and there, but that's just shader cache going in the background. When it comes to the Simu emulator and the Vulkan backend, it definitely favors NVIDIA, at least in my experience. And this 3060 has more than enough power. Here's Zinnia, the Xbox 360 emulator. One game I always like to test with this is Forza 2, but for the past few weeks with their new updates, I haven't been able to get that game to run. So here we have Red Dead. I do have V-Sync off because I wanted this to run at 60. Now it'll run at 30 all day long at 1080p, but when we try to turn V-Sync off and get this game to go to 60, it just can't quite handle it, at least without a lot of hacks in this emulator. And the final emulator I wanted to test here was RPCS3, the PS3 emulator. We're at 1080p, Vulcan back in, Skate 3, one of the harder ones to emulate. We're running at 60. It's looking great here. This emulator really does take advantage of more cores and threads, and we have 8 cores, 16 threads, with a decently high clock. So yeah, I mean, it's going to run great. Okay, so yeah, I mean, it's actually performing really well, but it could definitely benefit from a bigger CPU cooler. I wish Dell would have done something about this. At idle, we average around 40 degrees Celsius. 
For gaming and emulation at 1080p, 82 degrees Celsius, and running Cinebench R23 thermal throttles us, we hit 100 degrees Celsius about 4 minutes into the 10 minute test. Now one thing I did try to do after I ran my initial test was replace the thermal paste here with some Noctua NTH2, and we're getting basically the same temps. It really comes down to the CPU cooler just being too small for this 11700. I was really hoping that replacing that paste would make a big difference. I mean, idle temps were a bit lower, but as soon as I started up Cinebench, around four minutes into it, we hit thermal throttle and I got the same exact score. In gaming and emulation, I never saw it hit thermal throttle, but we saw those temps were pretty high. We averaged 82 degrees Celsius. So that's the one thing that they definitely need to change out with this. If we could keep this CPU cooler, we would see better performance, at least in our benchmarks. While gaming, we'd probably be around the same, but our temps would be much lower. So when it comes down to it, that's the main thing that needs to be changed out in this PC. We have a really good GPU. That's an EVGA 3060 XC with 12 gigs of VRAM. When it comes to the RAM, I'm glad to see that they filled up all the slots, but then again, this is a 32 gigabyte model. I haven't seen an 8 gigabyte model in this XPS or a 16. I mean, you never know. They could be using single channel with the 16, but hopefully they're using at least two 8 gig sticks with that one. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching, and I do want to give Micro Center a big shout out for letting me review this unit. If you're interested in picking up a free 240 gigabyte SSD, head over to their website. I'll leave a link in the description. Put in your name and email, they're going to send you a coupon, and you can go in store to get a free 240 gigabyte SSD. But that's it for this one. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this XPS, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.